Ahoy hoy YouTube modeling community. It's Peter in the Woody Workshop. How are you doing today? Uh, this is going to be my NNL East wrap up. Uh, just to give you a little idea of NNL East weekend. Um, I'll be doing at least three videos. I'll be doing this wrap up. I'll be doing on on the tables video which I did differently this year and I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, and we'll be doing a stash ad um, video, <laughs> obviously, from the things that I got at uh, NNL East. One of which is a spiffy new NNL East uh, t-shirt. So anyway, I'm just going to go over my typical um, NNL East weekend. What it's like uh, if you've never been there. It gives you some idea. Uh, it's not going to be the same for everybody, but this is what it's like for me. Now, normally, uh, when we go to NNL East, I le live. I leave from here. Um, it's two hours to Toronto. I normally pick up my buddy, my traveling companion, Bill, and sometimes another uh, person from Toronto area. Then we normally go to uh, the between Kingston and Ottawa area in that eastern Ontario, pick up our friend Ken, and head south and east to uh, New Jersey. Um, normally there would be four of us in the car and we would do a one day trip. Like I would leave at 4.30 in the morning, 4.30, 5 o'clock, and we would get to New Jersey at the same time. This year, uh, it was just myself and Bill going um, from Central Ontario, we'll call it. We're both retired, so our friend Ken uh, said, well, since you guys are both retired, why don't you leave Thursday, stay at my place, and uh, we can leave from my place on, on Friday. Theoretically, that would break down the amount of driving I have to do, and that sounded good. So... Uh, Thursday I picked up Bill around 12.30 and uh, the first thing we did is we headed to a hobby shop. Now in this case we went to pick up a decal squeegee from uh, Panda Hobbies in Toronto just because we knew they had it and that was the, sort of the quickest place we could get to. Uh, so we picked that up, headed back on the highway and we got to Ken's place near Ottawa around uh, 5, 5.30 at night. We visited for a while, had some burgers, hit the sack. Friday morning we were on the road by 7. We uh, went down to Smith's Falls to a diner that Ken knows there. Had a good full breakfast. And as a result we didn't have to stop for lunch on the way down. Normally we would stop in Cortland, uh, New York for lunch, but we didn't this time. Uh, the only place we did stop was uh, Scranton. And you know you're addicted when you stop at Hobby Lobby on your way to a model show to see what they have. And all three of us, I think all three of us walked out with kits and uh, maybe other supplies. In my case, I, pardon me, I got a kit which I'll show in the stash ad. And I did get a bottle, a can of a dull coat, which isn't always easy to find. And then uh, we continued on our way and we got to um, La Quinta, the host hotel. And at this point, block your ears because I'm about to start cursing. Well, not really because this is a family, <laughs> hopefully a family friendly channel and I'm not going to be cursing. But I was not pleased. We got there at quarter to four. Uh, Check-in is supposed to be three o'clock. Um, we went to check in. Oh, your room's not ready. Uh, I'm already tired. I okay. Well, how long is it going to be? Um, half an hour to forty-five minutes. Uh, okay, that's not that bad. Meanwhile, Ken who had booked, I think after me, but he anyway. Whenever he booked, his room was ready, but he was good enough to hang around with us in the lobby. Uh, I guess in part because his stuff was in my car, but. So after 45 minutes, went back, no, no, it's not ready, going to be another half hour or more. It's like, really? Yeah, sorry, you know. So by 5 o'clock, we went up and said, is our room ready? 
oh no sorry it's not ready yet I said well this is ridiculous I'm tired I I want I want a break you know well we didn't get into our room till 5 30 so instead of the nice hour and a half break I thought we were going to have before supper had a 15 minute break then we're back in the car to go to Dave and Buster's it was rather annoying very annoying anyway um the other funny thing was I pulled in to the back lot to park and I drive a red RAV4 2020 um, and then I look over the other end of the parking lot there's another red RAV4 and then before we leave for supper at Dave and Buster's there's three of them back there and it turns out there were three red RAV4s and all three of them were Canadians another group from Ontario and one from the East Coast so that I don't know I found that humorous and um, we ended up going out to supper with three other guys from Ontario the other RAV, one of the other RAV4s and uh, four of us because uh, Ken had somebody join him Chris Martin you probably see his name as being Patreon on some channels he joined us and then a couple other guys from Ontario from our group uh, that came through the other way uh, through Niagara Falls they joined us so we had nine uh, people at supper Dave and Buster's and that that was fun nice chatting with uh, different groups you know and it seemed like not a bad turnout at Dave and Buster's although I think normally uh, when we went to a closer ho uh, restaurant to the hotel you had even more people anyway had supper headed home slept you know during the night got up early on Saturday so we got up early now we figured it was going to be very very busy because NNL East hasn't been on for you know since 2019 so we got up early had breakfast early got to the venue at 7 15 7 30 I think I don't quite remember now <laughs> a week out um, there was already a line but not quite as bad as I expected and um, but it did keep building during the morning. I mean, I don't think we've ever gotten there that early. And the great thing about NNL East is when you do go there, they start early, they come through, they start selling, you know, you taking admission, giving you the bands to put on your wrist, uh, giving you registration forms if you're entering models, and then you can get your parking passes, which is the card that you put with your model on the table. Like, you can have all that sorted out before the doors even open and that's fantastic because when the door is open you're in the door no waiting perfect perfect system now at one point when I was bringing my registration back up to the the table before the doors open I heard my voice my 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 voice I heard my name and it was Mr. and Mrs. BG I was so excited to see them um, I knew he was coming we've been corresponding uh, he had a parcel for me from uh, Iceman Collections and I sincerely thank them for dragging that along with them during their trip to to save me the shipping I really appreciate that so we stood there chatting for a while uh, getting to know them a bit and talking about the event and all that type of stuff that was great um, and then I said well I better get back to, to my crew so we're ready to go in the doors doors open like I said everybody's in right away now instead of bringing I had two models with me instead of bringing them straight to the contest room they were stuff I wanted from the uh, resin producer from Britain known as C1 models and I went straight to them first because that's out of all the list and stuff because I have a list in this book that I keep flapping around I wanted some of their product and uh, sure enough they had everything I had on my list plus I picked up an extra thing that I hadn't planned on more on that in the stash ad so I took care of that got their stuff then I went and put my two models on the tables where they I thought they belonged anyway and um, then I went back to shopping and you'll see more of that in the stash ads so I don't know what time it was when I finally started filming the models on the tables um, I want to say noon maybe just before I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure um, and sorry I'm checking my notes I try not to 
leave out stuff. So I did more shopping, some more resin bits that you'll see, some kits, older kits, and a couple, uh, one new one. Um, when I did start filming, whatever time it was, I was already getting tired. Now, I haven't done, I mean, thanks to COVID, we haven't gone anywhere in this household in four years almost. So I think it was, pardon me, a combination of sleeping in a different bed on Thursday night and Friday night and not, you never sleep properly, you know, and you're not your own bed usually. Um, all the driving, which I haven't done in four years practically. Anyway, I was already tired. So normally I try to uh, cover um, the models on the tables by taking individual photos of each one, as many as I can. And that's how I've done it for years. If you go back through my library on this channel, you'll see that normally I try to do that. And this time I was just already tired and I, can't, I just, I couldn't feel like I could do that to take individual pictures of as many models as I could and get around people to do that. So I went with the sort of, you know, start filming and scan the, the models and uh, I did most of them that way. Uh, so I don't know, this is going to be a different video for me when I do post the what on the tables video. Um, I hope it works out for you guys. Obviously in NL East there are a lot of people there uh, doing coverage. Throttle Power has already put up an hour and a half video on NNL East. I sorry I haven't had a chance to watch it yet but that's that's perfect. Mrs. BG was in there um, you know trying to do her best to capture everything in there and doing her commentary at the same time. Uh, thumbs up Mrs. BG I don't know how you do it. Uh, I think they were getting pretty tired by the later in the day too uh, and I disturbed her for a few minutes asking about the neat little uh, light she had on top of her phone uh, which is great the the lighting in there in NNL East uh, showroom is pretty good but there's some venues you go to where the lighting is not great for model photography so I gotta look that up on um, on Amazon or someplace and thanks for giving me the information Mrs. BG um, so I did filming in that style I hope it works for you guys I may later on do um, a video with just still pictures I did take a few but very few compared to what I normally do so anyway um, did get to meet other youtubers during the course of the day uh, I'm going to mention who I can remember and who I kept notes of while well, there's monsieur a madame uh, mr. BG and mrs. BG um, there's Jason from Blue Ox Models, got a chance to have a brief conversation with him, which I really appreciated. Uh, Mutt Modeler was there, we spoke a couple times, that was fantastic. James Duff from the Stash Report was there, uh, we had a chance to chat. Uh, Jim Phillips, and I think he said his uh, channel name is at real 33 racing but I cannot find it in my subscribers. And I can't find it in a search in, on YouTube. So I may have screwed this up. Uh, I hope you uh, pipe in uh, Jim in the comments and, and straighten me out if I've got this wrong. I want to thank you for the kind words about my videos. About <laughs> telling them that if you want to know what NNL is really like. Go check out Lazy Eyed Modeler. Thank you very much. Uh, I That was sincerely appreciated. I know Throttle Power was there. Because um, I heard mention of mention of him while we were there and um, I've, obviously his video has been posted if there are others there that I missed uh, George Ramos I don't know if he's a, as active on YouTube as he used to be but he was on YouTube and he's active in other uh, social media and he was there working with uh, the Tri-State Model Car Club that puts this on uh, he belongs to Diversified Scalers and they were helping out uh, putting the show on uh, this year. Uh, they're normally there, they normally have a big display but uh, they were just helping with the show this time so uh, that was cool. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about uh, coverage so far, now like I say I haven't seen uh, the YouTube videos as much but on Facebook the one interesting thing I found is that the uh, Sport Compact class uh, there hasn't been much coverage of that and I, I thought that was interesting. You see all the uh, 
you know, American Iron and stuff, but most of the people who post on Facebook kind of seem to have missed that class, at least the people I follow or the, that I've seen. I mean, you know how big Facebook and YouTube is, so there, you, know, you don't get to see everything, but I thought that was interesting. Um, so, anyway, I was saying I was tired. I I was out of steam by 2.30, and I kind of said to the guys traveling with me, like, I've had it. I it's a long wait through the awards ceremony and I hate leaving early because we've gone all that way may as well hear it but I said I got I'm done and uh, so we left early unfortunately as a result didn't get to say goodbye to the youtubers I kind of looked around before we left but <laughs> couldn't find anybody but I mean there's there's three rooms there's the main hall where the models are and there's the two con uh, two vendors rooms and there's the photography room where there are tables and stuff where people rest not to mention outside, they could be in their cars and all that. Couldn't find anybody to say goodbye to, so I feel sorry that I didn't, but it is what it is. So we headed off back to the hotel um, for a rest before we went to supper. Every year we go to the Longhorn up in Persephone, which is not all that far away. It's become a tradition since the host hotel was a Holiday Inn across the street from the Longhorn. Uh, we, so we had a rest before that. Uh, Bill went straight to sleep and I envied him. I wish I could have done the same, but I couldn't do it. Anyway, we went to Longhorn, had a great steak supper after waiting almost an hour to get in. They seemed to have lost track of us despite the fact that we pre-registered. Anyway, great supper. Uh, went back to um, La Quinta. Couldn't get in. Uh, had constant issues with the keys. Until finally the one young guy says, oh, well, if you keep them in a pocket with your credit cards or your phone or stuff, that tends to scramble the keys. Well, gosh, it would have been nice if you told me that yesterday when I had to get them reflashed yesterday. Anyway, got that fixed. Finally got in. Out for the night. Uh, Sunday morning, uh, another one of our crazy traditions is we head back up to Persephone to the Empire Diner because of the uh, ambiance of the venue. Uh, and it's another thing that suffered... Uh, La Quinta suffered after uh, COVID uh, because the service wasn't as good. The the morning uh, continental breakfast was not near what we used to get. And the Empire Diner was the same way. They used to have waitresses uh, in the old uh, diner type uniforms that would, you know, take your orders and old style uh, menus. And it was really cool. Um, this time it was just a gentleman in jeans and a t-shirt and, you know, the... There was a printed menu, laminated. It, it was surprising the difference, and the menu didn't seem as varied. We could be wrong there. It, uh, but we still had a good breakfast. We hit the road, um, hit the road west and north, and uh, you know you're addicted when in Watertown, just you know, not far from the border, we stopped at Ollie's. And we wandered in there, and sure enough, this particular Ollie's in Watertown had models, and each one of us walked out with a model. Uh, yeah, you know you're addicted when. And you'll see that in the stash ad video. We got uh, we got up to the border, and while we're waiting to get f through the border, it's like we saw an officer coming out in a lane next to us, or, no, two over from us, and we look over, and there's a great big motorhome that's going to try to go through the car section. So she had to come tell this cowboy that, no, this isn't going to fit. You're going to have to get over there where it says RVs. And so they had to get two more officers out to direct traffic to help this guy <laughs> get turned around. And it's always interesting at the port to look in your rear view mirror and see a, a motorhome crossways. Anyway, we got through the border, no problem. Uh, they're a really great uh, border officer there. Short little conversation, we're on our way. Got back to Ken's, got a pizza, had pizza, went to bed. And uh, had a good night's sleep. And then Bill and I headed for home. I dropped him off in, uh, in Toronto. And uh, we didn't stop <laughs> any other hobby shops along the way. Although I kept saying... Well, if Daily Hobbies is open, we could stop in there, but he's not open Monday. You know you're addicted when. And then I got home Monday night. I forget what time I got home. Four? Maybe? Something like that. 
I eventually uh, had a shower uh, after chatting with my wife for a while and then I flaked out on the on the couch and slept for about an hour and I've spent the rest of the week trying to catch up. So that's why I'm late doing the video guys and gals. Uh, sorry about that. This is probably long. Uh, here I'm going to stare at you and it's already 21 minutes, 22 minutes. So I'm sorry it's so long but that's kind of NNL weekend for us. So look forward to the On the Tables um, video. That may be up before this one, I'm not sure. And then look forward to the Stash Ad video that I probably won't get around to doing until tomorrow, uh, which is Sunday. And hopefully have all three of them up by the end of the weekend. So I hope everyone out there is doing well. I hope you find this interesting. And if not, I hope you had a good snooze while I've been sitting here flapping my yap. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for taking time for watching this and my other videos. I sincerely appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Bye now.